Hey everyone, it's Ometer, and today we're going to make a shaker card for a La La Land Crafts. Now, today I'm going to make... I'm, I'm obsessed with shakers. If you guys follow me at all, you guys know that I'm obsessed with shakers, marshmallows, and coffee. That's pretty much it. Oh, and my Ray Dunn mugs. But I digress. Now, what I'm going to make is using... I'm going to use Tropical Marcy. We're going to use this gorgeous, gorgeous stem, which I've already colored in with my Copics. I've also used this hibiscus dye also all of these items by the way are already in the La land craft store this is the this is a set of two it's the tree stump and twig this one is the grass and mushrooms border dye this one is the scalloped rectangles the stitched scalloped rectangles on also in the shop and for the sentiment i use this clear stamp i use another day in paradise from this hippos in paradise stamp set now I've already prepared everything. I just, ooh, making a mess. Oh my goodness. So we're going to assemble the shaker card. Now, oh, I also used, where, I almost forgot this one. This is the, this one is the stitched scallops border. You can use it as a curtain. You can use it as ruffle. You can use it as all sorts of things. I'm going to use it on this card as water, as waves. I've gone ahead and cut the edges on each one now this does cut off right here but basically i just put my cutting mat my uh my cutting mat yeah my cutting mat right it ended right there so i was able to have a full sheet now i'm going to multi-layer this so i have several several layers of water now i've gone ahead and made my card and this is 11 by 4 and then I scored in the middle and I've gone ahead and used my Copic markers for the borders and everything to give that nice water. I used some greens for this. If you guys want to know all of the markers that I used, go ahead and check out my blog, my blog. <laughs> I will have a link in the description so you guys can see all of that. I try to make my, I'm trying to make my videos to not take so long. Hence why I put a lot of the stuff on my blog. So make sure that you subscribe to my blog post on my blog amateurcraftkit.com just like the name on on my youtube channel i have other cool things coming out from la, la land crafts so if you guys like la, la land crafts make sure you guys are staying tuned so right now what we're going to do is we're going to add the acetate to the front of the card the frame of the card where we're going to put our sequins to make it a shaker card i like to use wet glue like i mentioned in the past because it works better for acetate since it is non-porous. All right, so I'm just going to set that aside for it to for it to dry. This is my card base. Now, what we're going to do is I should have done this <laughs> earlier, but what we're going to do is we're going to I meant to actually see I do these boo-boos all the time. I meant to actually put this in here first. And, but we're going to go ahead and just wing it. Why not? Now, I've gone ahead and I did them on both ends because I wanted to go ahead and have multiple waves. So all I did was just do the border cut on both of them. Now I'm just going to cut them in half because I do need various of them. And this way I didn't waste as much of the heavyweight cardstock. All right. Now I'm going to use wet glue because if I use the other glue, it'll leave more of a thickness on, on the, on the card. And since it's going to be foamed, I need to make sure I have it as flat as possible.
we're going to now add the mounting foam for the frame. And of course, you guys know, I love me some mountain foam. Why? Why not? And, oh, let me, I just double it up. I don't really need a massive thick mounting foam because I only use clear iridescent sequins to make it easier. And I know people have a, may also have a hard time like finding all the sequins that they need. And I basically just kind of take a look at to see how much it would cover like one end because I'm going to cut it in half. And I'm actually going to cut it do, do, do. I'm going to cut it in thirds. This gives me the rise that I need to make it a shaker card, but also not so thick that you'll see it from both sides. Now, I'm not worried that this is showing because I'm going to add this right here. The grass is going to go up front and we're going to have other little things happening. Okay, so let's bring in this. This little tree stump is going to go back here. I'm going to use this tree stump. Cut off that little edge. I want it to be like right here. right on that you can take it rid of this so for this since we're gluing it right onto the acetate again oh <laughs> my bottle is drunk um oh oh my goodness we're going to just add some wet glue and with the wet glue i try not to get so much of it because if it spreads out you'll see it on the acetate even though the acetate is wait we're going to even though the acetate, even though it dries clear, I feel you can still kind of see it in the acetate. You see, there it goes. So you want to rub it off as soon as possible because it's spilled out. Now, you won't be seeing that part anyway because Marcy is going to be over it. This is going to go right in here. Going to nestle that right in there. So let's go ahead and just adhere that right now. I'm just, on this one, I am going to just adhere the bottom part because I might end up sticking other little things in there. And in retrospect, I could have place this underneath and I didn't underneath um, I mean between the vellum but I really wanted to stand out like that on the top okay and see it still worked out and I still have like a little grass if I want to use it for another project by the way whenever I do color stuff color images I always want to use them on other um on other cards and other projects because this is a no joke they take some while to color so I needed to redo my sentiment because I forgot to actually stick it in between the waves. So I just went ahead and stamped another one and die cut it again with the scalloped rectangle dies. And I'm going to use these markers to show you how I actually colored them up. Now I have some uh, scratch paper on the bottom. I start with my BG10. I'm just laying down some color. The reason why I do this, because I feel like it's easier to then layer on the darker color, which is BG11. And this is what I did with all of my other die cuts, the waves, all of these scalloped rectangles. I then 
went ahead and just swiped it over the edge just to give the edge a little bit of a darker color. And then I came in again with my BG10, since it's lighter, bought it out some more, blended it out to give it a little bit of shading, a little bit of shadowing. Then I went in with my BG3 to bring it out some more, blend it out just a little more. Just a few swipes, not too much because then you're just adding more color. Then I'm going to go with my BG quadruple zero and blend it all inwards even more to get a softer look and a softer feel. And oop, that's all I did to get my sentiment. Okay, so we're back to our regularly scheduled program now that I have way too much mounting foam so in retrospect i really need to cut this out i really need to use less mounting foam you guys i got carried away i wasn't paying attention and then i'm like what is this all of that mounting foam on here so now i like to put in my characters and everything prior to prior to putting the window down because i've learned with time you end up like smashing things and then the sequins and this way you can make sure that you are definitely definitely having it stay sentiment all right here we go and this is why i like to do my images on the front there first okay let me do this first i'm going to actually adhere it to the acetate. There we go. Now I'm going to add the other ones, the other flowers. We're going to go ahead and just add these other flowers. A little accent pieces. I want that one right there. There is, I have three all together, so I'm just going to place them in different places. Right there. And then this little one to make oop, the third. Right there. Okay. So now we are ready for the sequins. And as you guys know, I like to use iridescent sequins because. It picks up whatever color you're using, and I'm not going to lie, I hated having to buy and order so many sequins to try to match every single little thing that I wanted to make. So this one's going to have tons of sequins. And if you buy this uh, iridescent ones, it's, it's a lot more inexpensive. Look at all that mounting foam. Seriously, Amber, you need to stop. Okay. So I put that in the bottom. I'm going to go ahead, just throw a little more, why not? Ah, there we go, okay. So now we're just going to go ahead and center, oh, <laughs> upside down, center our frame, which is going to be centered in accordance to the outside. Let's make sure we... Now, I turn it over to make sure I get all of that. Hmm. Maybe I did add too much. Now, it's a little bit stuck. Let's try to figure this out. All right. I didn't want you guys to see me beating this, <laughs> this card, but I got it to go shaking around. See, there it is with the waves and just all of that sequence. Maybe I shouldn't have put as much, but you know what? It looks awesome. And it fills it in. It really fills it in. So I really like it. So hope you guys like this, you guys. Let me know if you guys want to see me coloring my images. Um, what I did for the hibiscus, I just went crazy. And I looked around for pictures. And I wanted them to look a little bit more natural. So hope you guys like it. Let me know what you guys think. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye, everyone.